Mine is a story of frustration, a story of dreams deferred, a story of possibilities, a story that talks about a search for partners. This all comes from my school vision. The vision speaks to the fact that we're a community school in pursuit of excellence. And my mission speaks, amongst other things, about the need for us to form beneficial partnerships. So when I was approached to get involved in the project, I felt this is probably the opportunity that one has been waiting for, to find a vehicle so that our mission and vision can find an expression. I have no regrets. Adam Kize is located in a very, very difficult area. You are challenged on a daily basis as a manager to find solutions to many a challenge. Now, the partners that I found in Partners for Possibility have helped to shape my understanding. They have reinforced my value system. I found thinking partners. I'm a changed man. I found my blue. I'm no longer that teacher or that principal who does everything for everyone. People have been given the necessary tools and ideas and skills. They are capacitated enough to do the things that they need to do. We reflect, we reflect, we reflect. Why? Because we realize that there is a need for one to change one's style, one's ways of thinking. In our meetings, in our briefing sessions, we reflect all the time. We do that. And of course, I have improved my listening skills as well. I listen. Not easy, but I listen. <laughs> Sometimes there's always that edge to want to interrupt. I've also encouraged my colleagues to do the same. We don't listen to the learners. We are quick to judge, we are quick to take action, we are quick to punish. We don't listen to our parents. Parents have got a story to tell. We never get to hear that story because we don't listen. It's something that I'm practicing at home, by the way, because I do realize that at times you don't listen to your own children. I have refined my consultation skills. I have been asked by the department from time to time to consult with my fellow colleagues, my neighboring schools. I found the time to test these skills. Because sometimes when we discuss these things in the workshops, they seem to be so easy. But in the <laughs> real world there, you get to be challenged. Mm -hmm. And people are always looking for the smart ones who think that they've got all the answers. Okay. Now, mine is an area that is faced with so much challenges in the sense that I've opened my doors deliberately because my vision says you are a community school. So open your doors. Easier said than done because people can take advantage of that situation. But I have consciously worked to improve the relationships in my community. Peter Block talks about fragmentation of communities. Indeed, our communities are fragmented. Our communities are yearning for leadership. And I have this belief, and I'm very strong in this belief, that schools are unique in the community in the sense that they've got those resources, those skills, that knowledge that they can leverage for the betterment of their communities. I think Aydin Kize is currently playing that particular role. Staff morale, I have a reason to believe through my engagement, the staff morale has risen. My colleagues have got that spring in their step. There's bars in the classrooms, there's bars in the boardrooms. And people have become productive. As far as my governing board as the SMT is concerned, I am convinced that there is more cohesion in the manner that we do things. This is reflected in the kinds of engagements we have. You can look at our minutes. People are contributing, decisions are taken, and there is unity of purpose. Next slide, please. People, it's basically what I've been telling you, but I'll just mention a few things. I call this a new paradigm because indeed, we have developed a new paradigm, a new way of doing things. I've spoken about the SMT meetings. Everybody has got a voice. And I make a point that when we meet as the SMT, every department 
gets to account about each and every activity that is happening there. When we have staff meetings, I normally point out an individual to give an account of the things that are being said in the meeting. That is my way of holding people accountable, and that is also my way of giving people a voice. Less assumptions, we interrogate. When we talk stats, we want people to give us figures that can be verified. Curriculum issues are discussed. Conflict resolution is handled because we now have a way of doing so. I've learned to be assertive. I've always been assertive, but I've been, I think I'm being more assertive in the manner in which I do things. Like I said, I'm better in handling resistance. I'm able to identify the clients and I'm able to hold people accountable. What is my client, if you ask? My client is my immediate SMT. And the SMT understands that the teachers are their clients. With the same with your learners, they are the clients of the SMT members. I said I'm consulting with the neighboring schools. Why? Because the department has seen the need for me to be utilized to support my colleagues. Um, as far as the new value system is concerned, probably some of you know by now that the department has this buzzword, transform to perform. This is what is called values in education. I've tried to amalgamate all the ideas that we have picked up during our interactions to see what is it that we can do to reinforce the whole notion of transform to perform. Schools are challenged to have a set of values. Throughout the year, you've got to adopt a value for a particular month. In my case, I've adopted only three values, namely respect, tolerance, and punctuality. Why did I adopt those values? I've come to realize that there's so much intolerance in our communities, so much intolerance in our society. People lack respect for one another. And of course, within our context, late coming is a bit of a challenge. So for that reason, I said, I'm not gonna be adopting 12 values. I'm gonna be focusing on three, those three values. The idea is not to have values. The idea is to leave the values. And I think we are on the way to realize those. Humor, humor, humor. I use that quite often in my classroom because I happen to be a subject teacher. I use it when we have our briefings and meetings. It does make people feel relaxed. It does break the tension, particularly in the time when exams are being written. I'm sure my colleagues can attest to this fact. Uh, asking incisive questions, definitely we do that. I meet with parents on a daily basis. There's always a story behind a story. Ask those incisive questions. You will come to appreciate the real, real situation. What attains in a home situation, what informs the behavior of the learners. Ensuring a safe and learning spaces, that continues to be my responsibility. We have safe spaces in our school. We have safe spaces within our school grounds because our mission and vision speaks to those things. Idem Kise is one of your full service schools. Probably some of you might not know about this. There's a notion that schools need to cater for those learners who've got learning barriers. Now, in my district, there are only two such schools. It's Idem Kise and Net Domain in Effluent. What it means, amongst other things, is that we need to provide care, we need to provide support, so that learning and teaching can happen. Now, I have possibly many a times spoken to the need for us to cater for the less privileged. Those learners that some of us tend to negate because they are difficult to teach. Now, the idea for us is to create an environment where those learners can also be given a chance to receive good quality education. Easier said than done, definitely, but my school has systems in place to support those types of, uh, sorry, types of learners. Next slide, please. In terms of our own relationship, it was never easy in the first instance. My colleague would prefer to talk about finding about or knowing your neighbor. I think he's being the neighbor. We've negotiated 
our partnership, we have reached consensus, and we have adopted common values and common approaches. Contextual issues had to be dealt with so that we can sustain our relationship. Issues have been ventilated so that we can address common concerns, because there were common concerns, right? And we have done so openly so that we can reach common ground. And I have a reason to believe that we have reached that common ground. Ours is a partnership of equals. We enjoy mutual respect. Indeed, we have ventured into uncharted waters and we have found each other along the way. We did bring some of my colleagues on board and we have invited them also to interact with the kind of issues that we normally grapple with. Further engagements during the COP and workshops have helped shape and inform the partnerships as well as our modus, modus sorry, operandi. My partner, I would say there were times where one will be challenged to a point of discomfort. I found that to be quite useful if you want to learn, if you want to change your way of thinking, particularly when you have to you know, challenge your own assumptions, your own thinking about various challenges. Next slide, please. Now, the focus of our visit is basically that of my colleague providing the necessary soundboard. The principal's position is a lonely position. Principals can attest to this fact. When Mariana comes to my school, I realize that here's my sounding board. Here is the person that I can pour out to. Here's the person that I can share my concerns with. And she is good when it comes to listening. Sometimes I have a reason to believe that she's not necessarily paying attention to what I say. <laughs> but I think it's one of those unique you know, qualities that coaches have. The fact that they can listen. And when they give the response, you realize that indeed they were listening. We've spoken about issues concerning our learners. She has given me information to research on the internet. Especially when I come to share with her some of the challenges, my learners not doing so well in mathematics, when I talk about behavioral problems and so on and so forth. She has encouraged me to explore various strategies when dealing with inter interpersonal relations. Somebody has said that this issue already. It's not easy to deal with members of your staff. Be it top management, be it middle management, being the ordinary teacher. You've got to find a way of engaging with the colleagues. I think Mariana will then come up with ideas and strategies and say, Zola, don't you think maybe the problem lies with you? Don't you think there's a need for you to do self-introspection? And I found that quite useful. As far as our project that we did is concerned, my focus was on continuous professional development because I realized that that's something that is lacking in my middle management. The fact that they don't necessarily monitor and evaluate their own clients, being the educators. And now, Mariana would then say, Mr. Principal, you've got a good project plan in place, but I think there are areas that you need to pay special attention to, your details and your deliverables, and I found that quite useful. Way forward, the two of us have agreed that there's so much to do. Ours is still work in progress. Let's meet in the new year and continue our conversations because there are bigger issues. Transformation in education. Thank you so much. That's my story. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I too have a story to tell. <laughs> and my story is called looking into the yard of a neighbor. Looking into the neighbor's yard. I don't have any slides, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when I, before I joined um, Parker's Possibility, it felt like, you know, when, you, when I was a young child and we moved into the new neighborhood, as naughty children, we used to throw small stones yes. into the neighbor's yard. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and sometimes we used to throw stuff on the roof, and sometimes we used to throw, you know, the checklist, bubble gum papers, we throw that into the neighbor's yard. <coughs> and sometimes that stuff used to come back into our yard. Because <laughs> we didn't know the neighbors. 
And then eventually, as time went by, we started standing on, on stools by the Bible Creek to look over into the neighbor's yard to see what's going on in the neighbor's yard. So I think possibly my view on education and what was lacking in education and kind of what are the principals doing in the school that things are not going well is me actually throwing criticism or throwing stones into the neighbor's yard. But I never visited the neighbor's yard. I just kind of <coughs> threw things over. So I think I judged the schools a bit too harshly and I judged the work of the principals too harshly. And I think with Partners for Possibility, I think I actually went into the neighbor's yard. And so the neighbor's yard is Aydin Kinze. And I spoke to the neighbor myself, which was Zola. And I think as we, so the, one of the important things that I learned was not to stand on the sidelines of things that's happening around me, but to remember to go into the neighbor's yard and to speak to the neighbor. Because that's when the relationship will develop, and that's how we will connect. One of the other things that I really appreciate was the, the, the workshops um, from PFP. Uh, I think the Flawless Consulting, I said to Zola when we met last week, or it was last week, yes. I said to him, one of the things that I learned on Flawless, flawless Consulting was to contract with myself better. Not necessarily only with, with my clients and the people around me, but to contract with myself. So one of the things that I've contracted with myself is if an event is boring, I give myself an hour and then I leave. And that's my contract with myself. She's <coughs> so the, the meeting should, is not boring. I think um, um, time to think, you know, my business is in coaching, so I really appreciate it, just the reinforcement and the art, enhancement of skills of time to think. Community of practice, the, the community building, I really appreciate it, and I'm doing work with our youth in, in inclusion and belonging using the skills from that book. As Ola said, our partnership is one of thinking partnership, and we had interesting conversations, tough conversations, but I think it, it helped me broaden my perspective of where the school is. And I have a, I have a new appreciation for the work the school does, the principal and the principals and the real dedication that they have. And I think that's my story. We are friendly neighbors now. <laughs> <laughs>